Today we're going to take you on a circular three mile walk from Darwin Railway Station. We'll head into town and up to the iconic Jubilee Tower where there's stunning views across the area. We're starting at Darwin Railway Station which was opened in 1847. By 1900 the station had facilities to deal with passengers, goods, horse boxes and livestock as well as a 10 ton crane in the goods yard. In later years, the station buildings were demolished, with just the station master's house still standing, which is now in private ownership. The station was refurbished in the early 1970s and improved in 2012. Leaving the station, we head downhill into town to reach the recently renovated Market Square. Look out for the large weaver bird sculpture. It was created using a combination of weaving and welding techniques by Manchester-based creative studio Lazarian. There's quite a few historically interesting buildings to look out for around town, including the Carnegie Library and Old Chapel, which is now a busy pub, as well as a large Victorian building which houses Darwin Market Hall and the municipal offices. When Mahatma Gandhi came to England in 1931, he visited Darwin, and this photo was taken in front of the town hall. Continuing along the road, at the end of Church Street, look to the left and you'll see Belgrave Square. These two small buildings are now used as retail units, but used to be tram waiting rooms. Darwin had the very first steam tram system operating in the country for public use. Services began in 1881, and a commemorative plaque sits on the side of the former ladies' waiting room. In between the two buildings, there's also a memorial to the South Africa War. Next, we head along the pedestrianised Market Street, turning left up Arch Street to reach the Spitfire. Created as a memorial to the town's contribution of a Spitfire during World War II, the sculpture is almost seven metres tall, it was made by Darwin-based business WEC Group Limited. Passing to the left of the red brick buildings, we continue now up Borough Road, walking for a few minutes to reach a park entrance. Our walk now takes us through Bold Venture Park, which opened in 1889 and is situated on land that was previously quarried. On entering the park, the first thing you see is a striking bronze angel statue. It was unveiled in 1921 as a war memorial, with each of the five steps leading up to the statue, symbolising a year of World War I. You can choose which of the multiple paths to follow around the park, and as you walk, look out for the cobblestone mosaic of a peacock, the waterfall, and the lake. Heading uphill, we eventually reach Manor Road and cross it to continue through Woodlands. Sculptures are dotted along the pretty route and dappled sunlight filters through the trees. After leaving the woods, our path continues through a gate and uphill following the sign that says, to the tower. The footpath to climb Beacon Hill ascends gradually, with the views opening up as you climb. It's not far till you've nearly reached the top. When you get to a crossroads, head left up to the tower. Darwin Tower, or Jubilee Tower as it's officially called, was completed in 1898 to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. It was also seen as a celebration of the victory of local people for the right to access the moor. Jubilee Tower is 85 feet tall, and if you're lucky enough to find it unlocked when you visit, you can climb to the top to see panoramic views across the area. If it's clear when you visit, you might even be able to see as far as North Wales or Blackpool Tower. In 1947, the original wooden turret blew off in a gale and wasn't replaced for more than 20 years when local people fundraised 
to pay for a new fiberglass dome. After strong winds in 2010 brought the turret down again, a new stainless steel dome was put in place in 2012. The octagonal tower has plenty of seats around the base, so even if it's a windy day when you visit, you should be able to find a sheltered spot for a picnic lunch. Multiple footpaths lead away from the tower, and you can extend your route here, but we're going to continue by returning to the crossroads. Take the left-hand path heading northeast, with the motorway visible ahead. In the distance, you can see the iconic India Mill. It operated as a textile mill for more than a hundred years, but is now split into commercial units. The chimney was built to resemble an Italian bell tower, and is 303 feet tall, with peregrine falcons nesting in the top. Our route takes us downhill and through a gate, where we turn right at a crossroads. To extend the route, you can detour by going straight on instead. This path takes us to the Sunnyhurst, a perfect spot for a break and some food. It's a dog-friendly pub, welcomes walkers, and is open weekday evenings and from lunchtime on weekends. Heading to the left, we quickly reach the entrance to Sunnyhurst Woods. You can pop in for a quick look or walk for miles here, as the woodland covers 85 acres with seven miles of footpaths. Look out for the sculptures dotted around, then head back to the entrance you came in once you're ready to return to our route. Retrace your steps past the pub and back along the path. Returning to the crossroads that we left earlier to do a detour, our route continues along the track. Look out for horses on both sides of the fields as you walk and views back up to the tower. This pretty path eventually leads to a road and passing some houses we take a left, joining a footpath on Punstock Lane. After heading downhill for a few minutes, the path leads to a street, then to Borough Road, which drops back down to the Spitfire. From here, it's just a couple of minutes back into the town centre, where there's plenty of places to shop and eat if you'd like, before heading back to Darwin Railway Station when you're ready to go home. We hope you've enjoyed travelling along with us today, discovering some of the different options for exploring from Darwin Railway Station. <laughs>